Hello, this is Daniel from CG Dreams and this is a continuation from the previous videos regarding the hair system in Cinema 4D. Now these videos are really an exploration of the hair system. So as time goes on, I'm probably going to make more videos to actually update some of the things that I've already learnt and experimented with. Easier and better workflows of actually getting what I want from this hair system. One of the things that you see me do so far is make a selection of polygons, normally in a strip at a time, so that I've got full control. And the guides are going to be made from the polygon selections. Indeed, you can select also vertices, which makes it even easier, because often is the case, I will go and delete one of the rows anyway, because I want to deal with just one row at a time. So if you wanted to do this workflow, then start to add hair where with only vertices selected. This makes things even easier for you. However, there is times where you want there to be a particular um, line in which you want the hair to grow from. And it may not always be the case that your geometry has the polygons or verts in the right places. As an example, the parting of the hair may not be linear according to the polygon or vert selection. This may not be what you want. And in often cases, when I've looked at hairstyles, the hair splitting or roots don't always go like this linear. In fact, often the case is I've seen, especially on female haircuts, is that it goes off to one side and it kind of goes a bit more like this. Now, this is obviously going to pose problems because we haven't got the polygons following this direct line of root. One method would be to create topology that is following that route, but that's really kind of a long way of doing things. So what about finding another way to have a particular line of flow where you want each hair strip to come from? And it just so happens that there is a particular way to do this, and that is using the spline guides with the snapping and then we can grow from the root in a uniform way. So let's just explore this. First of all, I'm going to go to the top where we got our spline tools and I'm just going to undock this palette. I'm also going to go over to the left hand side where we got our snapping options. I'm going to undock this as, uh, as well. I'm going to enable snapping and enable polygon snapping only. And in my particular case, I'm going to be using this sketch, but you can use the pen as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint across the or draw across the surface here a line in which I want the roots to grow from. I'm going to go off to one side. Just create a little bit of a curve there, make it look more natural. Once this curve's been made, we can just simply select the curve, go to our simulate tab, and then click on add hair. Now in the guides settings, we want to go to the root and then select this to be uniform. And for the growth, we want to set it to be direction on the Y axis. Now, if I bring down the count, it makes it more manageable for a style. But now you'll notice that the guides are now growing specifically in the direction of the spline curve that I created. Now, if I wanted to, I could obviously make that a little bit longer. Go to our brush tools and start to groom the hair. Now, there is some downsides to doing it this particular way. And one of those downsides is when you've got your brushes, none of the collisions will work. This is because it's been grown specifically for my spline. So this is the only downside that I found from this and as yet have not been able to find a solution. In other words, to get the spline and the geometry to be combined into one so that um, the brushes see the background geometry as something that it needs to collide with. But for most parts, it's not really a problem, especially when you're creating draping hair like this. It's quite easy to move it outside the surface like that. It can be done very, very quickly. Once of course you've got your style, you can obviously to you can obviously go to view the hairs. So I'm going to go to the hairs there. 
and in the editor I'm going to make sure the display is set to hair lines so that we can see the hair and you'll notice that the hairs are also uniform this is okay I suppose if you wanted a really slick um, running hair down but it's not very realistic so what we need to do is need to go to the hairs and in the root settings where it's set to auto set it to something like the spline segment and this is going to basically give us a more random look to it so if we just increase the hair count you can clearly see that it's still creating an accurate interpolation between all of the guides but it's given a more random fill in between them and this be this may be more suitable for you and of course you can continue to do what you did before and that is to go into the hair material add some frizz you can obviously go to the um, interpolation and if we just look along the edge here and I'll just increase this a little bit so we can see what's going on you can see here that we've got it to square at the moment you can see where it runs between the two guides if we change this to something like cubic you can see here that it's more curved curvature between the um, splines and of course you can try all different ones there okay, we can give them have a bit of variation as well and as already mentioned just go back into my startup screen as already mentioned you can go back into your hair and just do the thing you normally do so for instance just change the thickness add some frizz So the whole idea of doing it this particular way is we get a real ideal splitting and we're able to grow it specifically from a line. So as I mentioned there is a downfall with the, um, the collisions of the brush tools. The other downfall is when you grab the, the actual sphere or the head and you go to move it you see that it moves without the hair because it's not combined. So obviously you can just combine the two quite easily. If, for instance, if we drag the spline into the um, the hair object, now when, when we move the hair object, the spline moves with it. Everything else works fine like dynamics. So when we apply dynamics, when we've got collisions on, it will work. So I'm going to go, say for instance, to this, this sphere. I'm going to right click, go to the hair tags, and then go to hair collider. And we press play you can see that all works as it should do it's just that the the hair grooming tools the the collisions don't work but at least we get or have the ability to add this very controlled hair root splitting on our um, geometry and of course we can go in there and um, add another spline so we just go back in there for instance we could possibly use the same spline again but I'm just going to just show you again let's just look from the top let's just go along here and then I'm just going to copy the hair object and in the guides I'm going to just grab this new spline that we've created I just want to update click on reroute now if we go back to our simulate we select our hair tools I hope you can see the advantage of doing it this way we're able to get a very very controlled dividing between the hair the splitting between the hair and it's not going to be relying 
on the uh, geometry itself to have the geometry polygons be perfect with a, a the selection set. So when we go for a render now, you can see that we've got this split in exactly how we want it. Of course, at the moment, nothing's really set up. So, for instance, um, you would want to have a bit of kink and frizz, especially towards the um, the root area, where it will give us a bit of randomness in there. Let's see there. So just going back using the uh, the spline tools again, where we can just pull and push and smooth those splines. You can see here that we can get the um, parting of the hair to really look much better when we go in there and tweak things a little bit there. So it's quite easy to do and it's well worth trying this method if you want to get that part in exactly the way you want it when you haven't got the geometry or the polygons in the exact area that you want to grow hair from. You can see here from this time lapse that everything else works exactly the same um, for growing the hair longer, for clumping and for all the material settings. And um, the results are quite nice and it looks much more realistic as far as a style goes. Although I've yet to spend real good amount of time on making a style, but that's to, that's to come a bit later on. For now, I'm just really concentrating on just trying to find the best methods and workflows for Cinema 4D's hair system.